Live on WFLA Now, this is Run for Fun with running enthusiast Lee Spann. Let's go. Welcome back to the WFLA Now Stream Center for this week's episode of Run for Fun with Lee Spann, a show we created to help motivate people to get off the couch and realize that running can be fun. And if you're already running, we want to help you love it even more. I'm your host, Lee Spann. I'm a meteorologist here at WFLA, but also a running enthusiast. I've been running pretty consistently now for about 12 years. And guess what? I still find it fun. And one of the best parts of running to me is the running community. All the people that you get to meet, uh, especially at the large races, which we just had in Tampa this weekend. So we'll be talking about that. And we wanted to sort of create that in the virtual world with our Strava running group and y'all we are up to 87 runners now so if you don't know what this is uh, Strava is a free app for your phone Um, you can download it and then go to the uh, to the groups and the clubs and you can search for WFLA run for fun and then once you're in there you can see what other members are are running you can ask questions maria posts some uh, workouts on there coach maria we'll be talking to her about that so it's just a way to create the running community that i found uh in the real world kind of starting that in the virtual world so i look forward to having many more people on our strava run group now today's topic as you can see at the bottom of your screen is running recovery because thousands of people did run the Gasparilla Distance Classic here in Tampa this weekend. People from all 50 states, other countries were there sweating in the Tampa humidity. That's me cheering there on the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, yes, in a cheerleading outfit, tried to give some bre- some levity to the runners on Saturday, the 15K and the 5K. And then on Sunday, that's me running the half marathon um, and sweating pretty profusely there. And also running, of course, is... Coach Maria, Maria, you got to run multiple races. This is the 15K (laughs) with your husband there on Saturday. Yes, Yes. we had a lot of fun. And boy, that cheer station, like if you think you guys don't matter, you matter so much because I kept like it was so hot and I was just so happy to get moving out there. And uh, it was just really, really fun. So um, I I totally was um, like in my mind, I'm like, oh, I've got. Two more miles to, till I see Lee again. Two more miles till I see Lee again. Two more miles. And then when you guys get there and it's the high fives, it gets you all pumped. And so if you don't want to run, come out and cheer. Come out and cheer. <laughs> and that's one of the things I say about um, the Gasparilla Distance Classic is we we would really like more spectators. Yeah. It's a little harder to get to because of Bayshore Boulevard, but it, it is just a joyous It's occasion. pretty lonely yeah. out there, though. It's pretty lonely out there. There's not a lot of spectators. Not so. a lot of spectators. And so um, one of the things that I've said before is if you want to see – humanity at its best go spectate a race because these are just your neighbors ordinary people yes. pushing themselves doing something that they are proud of and then the people cheering for them are passionate about a stranger it makes and such a difference it's just a it's a beautiful part of yeah. um of a, the running community yeah and one other person no. also <laughs> ran our 5k it's time to check in <laughs> With Nick, I mean, now that man right there is running for fun. Look at that fun Look at on that his smile. face. Oh my gosh, it was, it was a great time. And it, she's right. If it wasn't for you guys cheering us on, I, I, I kept don't know. saying to him, I said, "We're almost to Lee. We're almost to Lee. We're almost to Lee." <laughs> <laughs> because we get to see you twice. So this was yeah. mile number. You just finished mile number one when I took this picture. Yes. And then you go down another half mile, and then you turn around, and you get to see us again because Bayshore Boulevard is a divided highway like that. So. Um, what were you thinking at, at this point, a so mile at, in? At this moment, I, I know I remember, I remember this clearly. It was going well. Like, <laughs> see, I, the smile was on the face. Maria's there with me, she, and right after that, the, remember the Marines that came by us with the flags? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they were she, right. Yeah. Uh, Maria stopped because she wanted to get a video uh, for her son. So as I'm running, I'm like, oh my gosh, like we're about to do the turn. And I'm like, that's where it started to get like, okay, it's getting a little tough right now. It's really hot. But I'm looping around. I'm seeing the donuts. I'm like, that is the last thing that I need. I told him he was not going to want those donuts. I I was like, I need a water. I need a Gatorade. I need an IV, something. (laughs) And then I loop back around. And then I'm like, I really want to walk. I really want to walk. But then I see Lee, pom poms, and (laughs) Joe's over there. And I'm just like, you know what? We got to push hard for the, for, uh, you know. Well, it's so funny. Right before we started the race, I was having trouble finding him in the crowd and I found him. Right. And he's like, I'm, I think. Lee 
Lee was in like cheerleading outfit. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, Lee was in a cheerleading outfit. That's that's a thing. He's like, oh okay, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, she's yep. in a th- she's definitely in a cheerleading. So outfit. our our running group is you know we we wanted to have a cheer station, and so in years past we've said like, okay, let's make this a 70s theme, and we and then we realized why don't we just make it a cheer theme, and so we. Um, Got real cheerleading uniforms, uh, like crazy people, and uh, and again, it's just a little bit of levity for the for the folks out there who are just struggling. It I makes mean, it's so much more fun. There's I no did, way around it. I mean, I did that. You know, the next day when I ran the half marathon, it was the same thing. It was, it was. You're counting down those last miles. The last four miles, you turn around at the southern side of Bayshore and you come back up. It's like it's only three miles to my friends. Now, you know, as opposed to four miles to the finish line, it's three miles to my friends. It's two miles to my friends. It's one mile to my friends. And then it's just, you got to buckle down for that last mile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it was definitely tough. To, and if it wasn't for Maria, I mean, she was, she, you did you know, it, it really fun. pulled me along there at the last like six we had, minutes. We had a fun time. He just, he just, he said the last, the last, yeah, the last mile was pretty tough, which it's always going to be tough. Mm-hmm. The last mile of any race is hard. It just mm-hmm. is. And he, he was like, oh, I think I might throw up. I'm like, I think you're going to be okay. <laughs> and I was like right before we crossed the finish line. So I'm like, over there, like you know, my girlfriend's over there like, cheering with her friends. I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. And I'm like, as I'm waving hello, I look back over and Maria is like, you know, I guess you're videotaping. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, I think this is when I was like, I'm, I'm about to throw up right now. Yeah. She's like, you can do whatever you want when we cross that finish line. Like, yeah, I get exactly. across. I just said, once you're finished, you can throw up. And we were right there. So <laughs> went across. And you didn't throw up. Didn't throw up. Didn't throw up. Got the nice cool rag, put it over, walked, got some Gatorade, got the medal. First medal, uh, hopefully of many. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll, what what did we'll it feel see. like when you were out there? Like what not like pain wise, like was it what you expected? Was it not what you expected? Like it, what did it feel like? It wasn't what I expected at all. I mean, showing up to the race, not gonna lie. Let, let me let me walk through you like yeah, what happened. I wanna, okay, I because hear. in the morning I set my alarm for six forty five. Uh-huh. Woke up, I was like, Oh, this is way too early. I can do another fifteen minutes. Totally forgot to set another alarm. I'm not gonna Nick. lie. Thank God, <laughs> Alex. Like you know, my girlfriend. She called me. I was like, w- w- why aren't you like calling me? Like I thought you'd be calling me by now. Like I thought you'd be texting. Like I'm like, you just saved my life. <laughs> and Lee's like, don't sleep in. Like how are you getting Thank you, Alex. Like, Thank if, you, Alex. If you <laughs> only knew what happened. So I, you know, we we get to the I get to the race in a you know good amount of time. Stretch. Get ready. Uh, didn't expect to see the stage set up, the music playing. I mean, Mayor Castor's giving a speech, the national anthem, Maria's singing it, she has a beautiful voice. <laughs> it was amazing. It was great. It was a good way to start the day. Um, and it was a beautiful day, too, but then it got, like, really hot. So the first half was great. You know, going up to Lee and Joe, uh, that first half, I felt great running it. I, I thought it was a good pace. Yeah. It, f- it felt good. We Come went, back around, I, that's when it was We went out a little too fast. Yeah. My plan was to go out 12-minute pace. But he was talking to me, so I'm like, okay, maybe. And in the heat, everybody's a little different, so I didn't know, so I let him go. And he was, so he's, <laughs> he did pretty well. He ca- stayed consistent until three, and then we kind of lost it. But that, yeah. I think that was more heat related than anything. It was yeah. real hot. I mean, yeah. it was hot yeah. standing there in that cheerleading outfit. I, <laughs> so yeah, I can when only yeah. imagine. came out on Bay Short. Yeah, it mm-hmm. was hot. And I thought you were kidding about the cheerleading outfit. She's like, oh, I'll be like cheerleading, you know, cheering my pom poms. I'm like, nah, no. <laughs> no, no. <that's laughs> she's, a, she sent me a picture of like, you know the morning of and I'm like oh my she wasn't kidding no <laughs> no I, I take cheering seriously but because I know how important it is and yeah and it helped out a lot just honestly. to you know give people something to smile about because you know there's some people out there um who it's I always find fascinating I've only think I've only done it ever one time where you go to a race by yourself you sit at the corral mm-hmm. you run the race you get back in your car and like there's nobody around. I've only done that once. And I'm like, well, I will never do that again. So my thought is if there's anybody out here who doesn't have anybody else, I can be their person. We have our name, you know, people have their name on their bed, on, on their yeah, bed. So yell. yeah. yelling their name. And <laughs> um, so in the end, it's just a, again, it's a, it's a fun part of humanity that there's this, all this collective joy that happens. I mean, even if, even when it hurts. Exactly. Well, and yeah. interestingly enough, like for loud, it's a it's a really special thing. Like everybody, even people that aren't in our group, are like, "You guys are the best cheers," because we have a reputation now of being out there. Yeah, we're gonna have to be out there. And Nick, you may not know this, but loud is an acronym for lifting others up daily. So we again, we try oh, to live up okay. to that. Yes. So yeah. that we're <laughs> trying to lift every one of those runners up as yeah. they go by. And yeah. so um, I, I'm glad that you got to t- a, little, a little taste 
of the running community because you'd only ever seen us, but now you see that that community is huge. It's a really big community, yeah. and that's another thing I was thinking about. You know, people running by Maria, saying hello to her, just everyone that you know knew you guys, and it was just it was really cool to see. You know, Cody recognized me again. You know, I mean, we met, and he uh, gave me like what was it, the gate. Uh, Data analysis, yes. Data yeah. analysis. Yeah. But, you know, seeing him again and seeing everyone come together at the convention center before the race was uh, it was pretty cool. It is. So it's it definitely a big a community. community. Mm -hmm. and, um, and now you're a part I'm, of it. Yes. I'm part of it. There uh, are and people, I got to stick with it. So Yeah, there are people who listen to this podcast who have asked me, how'd Nick do? I'm invested. <laughs> I got to know how that race went. So, so Nick, what do you think is maybe next for you? Um, well, I definitely want to keep it up. I, uh, I'll either do another 5K. I mean... As soon as possible. I, when's the airport one again? April first. So April that's 1st. so okay. that is one um, out at Tampa International Airport, and it's a five k. Okay. But you ride it on the tarmac. So if, if you thought there was no shade on Bayshore Boulevard, there is no. <laughs> there is actually right less on a tarmac. But um, Marie, have you ever run that? I haven't. Um, and admittedly, it's because I know that I can see the whole way. <laughs> So yeah, that would get to me mentally. Like, yeah, it's a mentally challenging race because yeah. you can see um, how far a mile and a half really is. <laughs> and the reason that um, when you're going out and back, the uh, the reason that Nick's saying he might do that is because there's a couple of runners in our um, in our newsroom, and they were and were saying, "Oh, everybody, let's run this race together." Um, so that's why Nick says he might he might do that. It's now you have a full other month to continue to train for that one. Yeah. It. Will also be warm. I can't imagine it not being warm. Um, come, I mean, April I feel 1st. like Nick's gonna do it. Yeah. I feel like he's gonna do it. Yeah, right, I, I, Nick, I, I you're gonna it. do it. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> well, and people are now oh. keeping up with you on Strava. Yeah, so like, I mean, come on, you can't now, just guys. give it up now. I mean, this this race is nothing. I should be doing the seven continents and seven, you know, seven marathons. <laughs> the, so, if you look at the bottom of the obviously of the screen, the, today's episode is about proper recovery from running hard, and specifically because there's about I think there was a, between. 20 and 30,000 people who ran uh -huh, this weekend sure. in the heat. And that really dehydrates your muscles. Yes. It does all those things. Maria told Nick, that make sure to have some electrolytes before you went out to the beach and did more sweating on Saturday. So what can we be doing this week to recover from that? But also, Maria, of course, we're going to talk more about just everyday recovery, yeah. like you, you know, as, as you train. So, Nick, I think we're going to let you go to bed. Yeah. Yeah. Any other real. any other final questions or comments about your experience starting back on January first when you really came a part of this of the podcast? Um, I just want to say that I think the training went very well. Uh, I really appreciate um, what you guys what you guys gave me. Yeah, I, I really think it did help out. Um, the whole aerobics stuff, taking it slow, learning how to like you know run and be patient, not thinking that everything needs to be fast and quick, yeah. and. Um, I just think it really and helped out. did you notice, like, your runs, if you look at your Strava runs, they were much slower than what you did? Exactly, In yeah. your race? Yeah. Like, you averaged 11.45 pace. Yeah, yeah. There wasn't a single run that you did that was 11.45 pace. Yeah, I, I know. It was, it was like 15. <laughs> I was, like, really you taking were, my time. Trust me, you guys like, say take your time. I yes, really and, and time. most of your runs were, like, 14 to 15-minute pace. I looked yeah. at every single one of them because I was trying to figure out how to pace you, and you did great. Yeah, because yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you yeah. give your hardest effort on race I day. I mean, you really mm -hmm. did yeah. great. I mean, you should be proud of what you did. Yeah, well, and I really appreciate it. But the, the next thing I would like to do is, of course, you know, uh, get, like, healthier, eating healthier and, you know, doing all that. So it'll just uh, make it better. So, yeah. But, yeah. Um, well, we so might next... not check in with you every week, but we're not, exactly, we're not yeah, yeah. leaving the podcast. We, yeah, might yeah, get, yeah. we might get a little video updates from you that you can just <laughs> take hello. on your phone and check well, also, it. Also, what I was going to say is, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry for just – what should I do now, though? <laughs> well, all right, that's a yeah, good question. So, uh, and, and, and I think we were going to talk, Lee and I need to talk, and then we were going to talk to our viewers, and we need feedback from our mm -hmm. viewers that um, because I would like to keep some things going on Strava. Yeah. Um, I'd like to keep a workout going on Strava. Um, and, and you just, we need to figure out what's going to motivate you to stay, stay with it. Yeah, yeah. So, well, of course, yeah. the 87 people that are with us on Strava, I mean, yeah. well, yeah. including us, but... You know, seeing the kudos and uh, getting the notifications, that definitely makes me want to get out. And, and run, so. I would keep up the three days a week. Okay. I would really keep up the three days a week. Yeah. This week, I wouldn't do any hard workouts. That's part of the recovery. Just don't just let yourself sleep more, um, eat more, mm -hmm. um, and and rest. But you can you want to keep those three keep the discipline of the three days a week. And you don't okay. have to go more than thirty minutes, but thirty minutes easy three times a week, and then whatever workout I put on Strava, you'll stay in shape. Yeah. Boom. 
Let's do it. Yeah. Well, that's and, then, and, then, and then just so you know, the next is a 10K, and then it's 15, and then it's half, and then it's full. Somebody <laughs> did say, uh, let's see if I can show oh you this. Someone gosh. did say, I mean, he's having so much fun. He should probably join in you in the half next year. Why <laughs> stop now? Um, I told him that I, I, I told uh, this person that I thought, that was a great idea. Didn't know how Nick would feel about that. Going I mean, from three, I'm always up for a challenge. Going so. to three to a, from, from three to a half is a, is a, a, is a lot, but it's but that's you know yeah. any you can train for anything. Maybe so the eight k next year. And that's right. An eight k is five miles. Yes, okay. it's also a hot one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hot. Starts at nine in the nine thirty in the morning as well, yeah. right? Yeah. But I mean, it's it's a year from now. So go big yeah. or go home. Let's right. go. Yeah, that's right. We got it. Yeah. So. Let's keep it up. Let's keep it going. I'm going to be on Strava. I'm going to see you guys whenever I get a chance. But, um, you know. It's well, let real. us know if you're going to do the um, the airport 5K, yeah. and then we can check in with you after that one. Perfect. That Thank you for like always staying up really late for yes. you to be on this podcast yes. this whole week. We've really it's enjoyed it. It's been a pleasure, guys. It's been great. But uh, We will miss you. Time yes. to go uh, get some good sleep. <laughs> yes. So. Thank you so much, Nick. We really appreciate it. Congratulations, Hi, Nick. Nick. I'm going to go sleep with my medal again now. Okay? Yes. <laughs> my 5K medal. I've, 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 I've snuggled up with a medal or two. When I'm going <laughs> to so thank you so much. All right. I appreciate you guys. Have a good one. All right. You too. All right. So, Maria, you ran multiple races this week. How are yeah. you recovering? I'm, I ran them easy, so I'm yeah. actually doing pretty well. I, I'm not sore at all. I didn't, I didn't push myself hard. I just wanted to get the miles in. Yeah. So. I, and, and actually that's true. You don't need to recover as much when you run things yes. easy. So, um, which a lot of people were talking, if you w listened to last week's, uh, podcast or, or digital show with Kelly Ann running seven marathons yeah. in seven days on seven continents are like, how can she do that is because she didn't, she didn't exert all yeah. the effort in each of those marathons. She kept it at a slow pace. Yeah. So that it's easier Significantly to recover. Slower. Yeah. Yeah. She, Kelly Ann's a three thirty marathoner. So she was running like her marathons at eight minute pace, but she ran, most of her runs between 9.30 and like 10 minute pace for the marathon. So so her recovery time, like she's recovering and bouncing back really quick. Right. But still on a cellular level, it still takes a lot longer even after you're sore to recover. So you do have to be really careful about that. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Cause I, you know, a lot of people did exert a lot of effort mm -hmm. or even if it wasn't your most effort, it was so hot and so sweaty. Yes. Um, and you probably people probably were sore or if you've just done a really uh -huh. hard workout maybe you didn't do the gas really distance classic but you know what it feels like when you're sore that's not the only issue no like, so no, let's no, move not let's, at all. yeah so how well, um, first of all how do you keep from being sore other than being slow like well slow i mean down? you're gonna if you're racing all yeah. out you're gonna be sore yeah. so um the best thing to do is to, to keep the soreness away is to make sure you eat right after the race which is very difficult when it's hot um a lot of times when it's hot and humid, your stomach is in a rough condition when you're done. So it, but if you can take in some fluid of, you know, electrolytes, carbohydrates, and protein within 15 minutes after, you will recover much quicker than you will if you don't. That doesn't mean you have to eat like a turkey dinner, <laughs> but like just get in a recovery, like even chocolate milk, yeah. like 15 minutes after, but you know, in that 15 minute window. And then when you, when you get hungry again, then you can eat. Because in a lot of races, do like you get your medal, you go through over the mm -hmm. finish line, get your medal, and then a, not too far away, there usually is some sort of food stand. Mm -hmm. People pass through that because they're so hot, they don't want to, they don't stop. But even if you just grab the, the banana or cheese it, they had cheese it this time, which was great because it had so much salt on it, and just hold it. Just, yeah. just have it in your hand so that you in, within that fifteen minutes, because yeah. you don't want it right then in fifteen seconds after you finish mm -hmm. running. But if you have it, then it's like, okay, I'm going to eat this banana. Yeah. So there's the, the funny thing about recovery is I think it actually starts way before you even start racing. Okay. So if you're carbo loaded correctly and you run the race correctly, which means like people, people don't think that's a thing, but it is a thing. Like th there's been numerous times, like even the other day I'm watching people just finish depleted and look like they look like absolute hell. And I want to pass out my card and be like, it doesn't have to be this way. Because it doesn't. Like, right. if you run a negative split or an even split race, your recovery is going to be better because you're not you're not depleting yourself from the glycogen stores that you had in your body early on in the race. Mm -hmm. So your recovery is better from that. Um, so while uh, when she means that a negative split, in case you're sort of just joining us mm -hmm. from the couch, the uh, 
the first part of your race sh it should be the slowest, and then you speed up so that your times get lower. So it's a negative each, each yeah. is a negative time, but less less time just for those last few miles. And you would think that would hurt more because you're you're pushing yeah. yourself, but because you had that left in your body to be able to do, that yes. means that you were you were properly fueled and properly ran that race. Yes, and if you properly warm up, that helps your recovery actually. If you properly cool down and you run after your race, just even five to ten minutes jog, even if it's a waddle. <laughs> did you uh, did, did you talk to Carla about my about my fit? No, I did not. <laughs> so, uh, Coach put in my plan, you know, to how to run the race. Like she gave me the times to run each mile, and then even in the plan, it said one cool down mile, please. <laughs> and I got to the end of the race, and then Carla said, "It's time for our cool down run," and I was. I mean, it sounded, I sounded like a three-year-old. No, I don't want to do it. And yeah. she's like, I said, I know Coach even put, please, I don't want to do it. it. I knew. And she said, Lee, you'll feel better. I go, but I know, but I know, but I don't want, I mean, I was literally yeah. stomping my foot like a three-year-old. And then yeah. she said, you know, you're going to feel better. And I said, I know I'm going to. So it it we helps ran, the next day. It, oh, it helped. Tremendously. It felt better during the, I mean, I didn't even run the full mile. It was like yeah, a little over a half run. mile a waddle basically mm -hmm. but I could even tell a difference between how I felt standing there stomping my foot being mad yeah to a you know, half mile down the road being like yeah it feels better oh <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not kidding you I used to have runners that would hide from me yeah they would hide from me in a race because I'd be like time to cool down and they'd be like no coach is gonna come and Eva I'm talking to you she would hide after the race so she didn't have to do the cool down <laughs> But, but it, 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 I, it, it is helpful. It is helpful. You don't even though you don't want to. Yes. And it's it's working out that lactic acid. Mm -hmm. It's like helping your your blood flow. Um, then you want to get into some recover, recovery clothes like, you know, some recovery. Um, you know, we talked about the compression socks. Right. Those are great. Or some they have pants that you can wear that are recovery and they have shoes that you can have wear that are recovery. Those those all those things help for recovery. And. Clearly electrolytes. I mean, that just goes mm -hmm. sort of without saying because you you that will make you feel better almost immediately. But yes. that's going to help that all the, all that electrolytes, yeah. not, not just water, mm -hmm. not Wa just not just plain water. You want to yeah. replenish all of that salt and potassium that you lost because during e the race. And even I know we're talking specifically about how hot and humid it was, and so the the sweat was on you, and you could tell mm -hmm. how much you were sweating. But even on a on a coolish low humidity day your body still sweats it just evaporates yeah so you're still losing all of that salt you're still mm -hmm. losing all of those electrolytes that it's just not sitting on your skin the way it yeah. sat on our skin yep. on this weekend so you still need to drink electrolytes even if you're like oh i'm not even sweating you sweated it just evaporated yeah and i'm gonna make you feel all of you feel so much better the ones that raced because on a colder day where the dew point is yep. lower, you could have run 20 to 30 seconds per mile faster. So if you were disappointed with your time, know that. Yeah. It, it feels a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> because, well, yes, whatever you did, just, you know, think about 28 to 30 seconds per mile less. Yeah. And how much, you know, and that is, as Maria has said many times, you just can't beat science. And yeah. as a scientist who studies the, the weather, she is a hundred percent correct. Yes. I mean, your your body has to do a certain number of things to uh, to keep it from passing out, to keep mm -hmm. it to keep it moving, and so you don't have the energy left to put into that run that you would have if it wasn't working so hard to keep you alive. Yeah, maybe we should um, have we should have a whole segment on that, and oh. we should have Meb come and talk about his. Olympic race, yes. but that was so hot because that was very difficult, and he struggled, and he did so well still, but he struggled. Yeah, so Meb is a... Um, so, Meb, we're talking to you. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Meb. Um, he is an Olympic, two-time Olympic runner, but uh, one he got a silver medal in, yeah. and then he won the Boston Marathon, and he won New York Marathon, yes. and he lives here in Tampa. And, and he, he was out on the course this weekend, was. which it was so... Uh, it's always amazing to have him out on the course. Yes, I mean, because, I mean, they, you know... In the running community, he is a celebrity, and mm -hmm. for him to take his time to come out, and he stood at the this this year at the halfway point and gave high fives, high fives, and just you could hear people murmuring, "Meb's coming." So is Meb? Is that Meb? Is yeah. that Meb? 
everybody gets so excited and it means yeah. so much to the yeah. runners Meb. we appreciate that yeah. like Meb's really listening to us but <laughs> he might he lives here in tampa you can see st- what, what's great is that there is an olympic runner that runs on bayshore boulevard yeah. quite often and so. he'll run with people yeah. I, he's run with some of my runners before and they've been like meb ran like a mile with me and talked to me and i was running i'm like yeah he he does that yeah he's really a nice guy really nice the um so, so now we've talked about what to do sort of in the immediate aftermath of, of the race, which is get some food, put, change your clothes, put on more recovery type clothes. But now we're, for some of us now, two to three days afterwards, is there, is there still recovery that we should be doing to help our bodies? Yeah. I usually with my runners, I try to push back their speed a few days or some of them, if they're older, we, we don't do speed at all for that week. Um, a lower mileage week, a little extra recovery, um, meaning time off. Try to sleep more. Sleeping really helps with the recovery. Um, you know, just sleep a little extra in the morning. Like maybe skip some of your runs and sleep a little bit more. Um, and I even tell my runners, even if it's on my schedule, even if I have you on the schedule, this is the week to skip some runs. If you don't, if you don't feel it, don't run. It's yeah. okay. Um, and then I think, and then make sure the other thing people do on a recovery week that is not correct is they cut back on their food. Because they think, oh, I'm not running as much. But then when you you need the extra calories to recover. Yeah, you your body those. is recovering yeah. and rebuilding its muscles. So if you cut back your food, then you don't get to rebuild anymore. So then you're kind of putting yourself in a hole. And I think it, it, it literally takes, like if you race, like you race 13 miles mm-hmm. and you race them pretty hard on Sunday, um, that's 13, it takes 13 days for you to recover from that. Oh, that's good. That's a good, yeah. a, a good mental... You know, so that doesn't mean you have right. to sit down for 13 right. days, but you're going to feel tired for 13 days. And I would even argue that in the heat, you're gonna, it's going to take a, even a couple more days from that. Especially because for some reason, we always get a, a really hot gas grill yes. r- race. Always. And we're not so used to the heat. Yet. Yeah. Like we, January was cool and there was a for couple sure. of, of cool mm-hmm. weeks in February. And now all of a sudden, you know, you, it was hot and it was humid. And recovery is just as important as the training. That's what runners don't understand. Like when they come back from a marathon, you're in the in, you're in the best shape of your life, and and you want to keep going. And I have to say, no, that's 26 days. When I was like running my best times back in the day, we used to go run like when, the first week back from a marathon, we go run to the track and we just like kiss our hand and tap the track <laughs> and say, "See you in four weeks," because that meant no speed work for four weeks. Yeah. And um. It's tough to let that fitness go. It's really tough to let it go. But it, in the long term, that's what keeps us from getting burned out. That's what keeps us, you know, being able to do another hard training cycle again. Like if Nick went right into another 5K, he could get burned out pretty quickly. Uh, he needs a, a week to rest. So, And you've even scheduled people to mm-hmm. walk. Yes. Like, no, walk. we're meant to, you know. Walking is great for recovery. That person maybe can't sit at home, can't sit on Mm -hmm. the couch for two weeks. But so you say your schedule is get out there and walk, move around. I walked this morning. I I called my friend Trixie yesterday and I was like, hey, can you can you walk with me tomorrow? Because I'm I I need and it's fun. Like, go find a friend that will walk with you. Yes, it's really fun to walk and do. Some people can't run, but um, would love to walk. So. And there were plenty of walkers out on yeah, Bayshore Boulevard for sure. doing the, all the races I saw. So even even if you were walking it, which was wonderful, you're still yeah. depleting some. Oh, so yeah. you're still very mm-hmm. sweaty. So some of these things are still going to, you know, as far as especially mm-hmm. getting in back the electro, electrolytes that you lost. Because I was standing in a cheerleading uniform sweating. So yeah. <laughs> I know that if you were walking in any um, for any distance at all, you were certainly using up those electrolytes. Yeah. And if you drink any alcohol afterwards that's not that's hurting your recovery however the studies have said if you can get your carbohydrates back in beforehand like taking that recovery drink then it's not as bad as if you just grab a beer right after and start guzzling it don't do that after a race try to get in the calories back put them back so you're not like depleting yourself even more because a lot of races they they like to have these big parties afterwards it it, it keeps people coming back to those races because mm-hmm. it's fun. It's a fun atmosphere. Um, so she's not telling you that you can't have no, a I'm beer. No, I'm never going to tell you not to, <laughs> not to do it because it's not – It we're doing this for fun, right? right? Yes. You're never going to – I don't think you're going to find too many elite athletes that are doing it. But we're not elites. Right. So um, 
you know, we're not getting paid to do this. It's got to be fun too. So just do it in the smartest way possible. I right. say, get the carbs back in, get the protein back in, um, and then go have a drink. And you have can a fun celebrate. Time. Yes. Did you see that the um, the may the male winner for both the 15k and the half? He, we had an interview with him on WFLA afterwards, and he said that Boston is seven weeks from now, and he was using these as yeah. training runs. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I was funny. like, anyone? I'm yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> must be nice. Yeah. Must Did you see nice. um, Christina won, won she also again? Won. Yeah. yeah. She, she works with me at run, at St. Pete Running Company, so um, she'd be a good one to have on. Too. Yeah, she's, she's a good runner. Because uh, think about this: they both of the people who ran on Saturday morning won the 15k, which is 9.3 miles. Turn around the next morning mm-hmm. and won the half marathon, which yeah. is 13.1 miles. And were both of those were the top finishers of both male and female. So clearly, yeah. they have much more that they could do if oh, they had not sure. raced literally the day before and yeah. won. And then the winner of the AK w- female was 14. Oh, wow. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. That. That's awesome. So AK is f- about five miles. So, um, and a lot of those people are local. We don't, you know, there's not, yeah. this race doesn't necessarily. Well, they give local prize money. Local prize money. Yes. Yeah. So it's not, it doesn't bring in necessarily some of the elites from all over the world, but it, it, it really showcases, you know, some of the our local, of our local races. Which is awesome. I love that about Gasparilla. And, yeah. and so, you know, let's go a step further just for a little bit about recovery in general. Maybe not from a race, but from a, a harder workout or when mm-hmm. you, know, you would give um, on Strava, you would give you're going to give one workout a week. Basically, that's going to be a little harder for people. Yeah. What do they need to do just on a week to week basis? Well, I think that the key to recovery on a week to week basis is just making sure you're eating enough. I, I think so many people just aren't eating enough for what they're doing and underestimate how hard the training is. So keeping your carbohydrates at a good level all the time, especially for my women, my women struggle to keep, like they did a whole research study on um, whether carb carb loading works for women or if it works for men. And it came back that said it only works for men and it doesn't work for women. Well, what they realized later was that the women are always so depleted from carbohydrates because they're scared to eat them mm-hmm. because of our culture and our all these this diet culture these, that we've got yep. going on. The women are afraid to eat carbs, so they're they're so depleted going into a carbo load that it doesn't help them as much because they're not they're just catching up. You see what I mean by yep. that? So it does work for women, but we are so depleted. So I would say keep your carbohydrates up and protein. Protein super important too. Um, but you want to keep your hyd- your carbohydrates high while you're training. And I do think that, you know, a lot of people may be a little in- confused about that because we, they may be trying to get into running to lose weight. Yes. But you can still do that. Yes, absolutely. But you also have to eat because if you, if you don't have the carbs, then you're not going to enjoy the run. You're not going to you're not going to keep going out there and you yeah. could actually end up hurting yourself. Well, and if you, and it's, if you're not eating the carbs, you're actually not going to burn as many calories because yeah. you can't run as fast. Yeah. So the reality of it is, yeah, you might be tapping into those, you know, the quote unquote fat, you know, fat source, but you're not running, you're not making, you're not burning as many calories. So it's not, and you don't feel as good. So it's very difficult. Um, so I would say in, and all, and your sleep, you gotta, you gotta, you got to get seven to nine hours of sleep. You have to do that. And if you can't get that in, your training has to look different. And so what do you mean by that? You have fewer miles? Yeah, you have to run fewer miles. You, and you maybe can do less hard workouts. You can't do as many hard workouts. So sleeping is important. Um, eating, the same thing applies from for racing. Eating after your hard workouts, making sure you eat before, eat during. Make sure on your hard workouts you're taking in a gel because my women are afraid to do that too. If it's over an hour, you have to take a gel. Even if it's 65, 70 minutes, take a gel halfway if it's a hard workout. And um, what do you say to people who, um, you know, they're kind of, what's the word I'm sorry, like they're proud of the fact that it hurts all the time. Uh, like, oh, like, oh I gosh. must be working really hard. It, you know, all my muscles are, are I'm, I'm sore all the time. Actually, one of my runners said it to me last week. <laughs> yep. She said, I just don't feel like I'm doing it right because I'm not hurting. There's nothing hurting and I'm not yeah. napping after thing. And I'm like, that's because you're doing it correctly. And when you're racing hard, that should deplete you. Mm-hmm. Like you, you can't go to that place very often. Otherwise you get burned out. I Which mean, is what you just said to Nick. Yes. He never ran 
any any of his miles as fast as he ran that, that no that I mean race. we touched on it in a couple intervals mm-hmm. that's how I knew he could do that you know just watching his intervals but we never did three miles at that pace ever like it it was just I mean he did great yeah he's a good listener he is a good listener <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah so it's not supposed to hurt I mean no. not every day I mean no and know, it I, should be hard there are yeah. days that it should be yeah. hard hard but um there's I always like to say there's good heart and bad heart. You should know the difference. Like if 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 you feel like every time you're going out there I, and you're racing something and then on race day you can't race that same pace, then I say workout hero, race day zero. That's what I say because there's a lot of people that that have really good workouts on Strava and then they get on and you get in a race and they can't do it because their body's not strong enough because they're not training the right way. So not recovering. Yes, they're not yeah. recovering. They're not they're, they can't push themselves as hard in their workouts because they're they're doing all that other stuff. So workout hero, race day zero. Yeah. Just wanna, remember that. <laughs> be the other way. You want to take be like Nick, be like mm-hmm. Nick and take those easy runs seriously, seriously slow so that you have all of, you, you build up, you know, your, your strength and your stamina so that you could. You can make it hurt on race day. Yes. That's, that's the goal is to yeah. be as fast Let, as you can it one day, there. not every day. And you got to trust your training. Yeah. You got to trust you got to trust your body that it's going to be there. So, this week, I mean, think of the things we're telling you to do. We're telling you to sleep, telling you to eat, telling you to rest a little bit more, maybe take a few miles off those. I mean, that seems like a good week. Yeah. It's a good week. I mean, I know even with your training when you're training for a marathon, Lee Lee needs a little more recovery than other people, mostly probably because of her schedule. Yeah, I know. Not enough sleep. And she just, so we do what I call a hard recovery week where mm-hmm. I kind of give her a week and I say, hey, any marathon cycle, I'm like, you can, we can back off on miles and speed and you can skip whatever you want that week. You know, she can, and she, re- it's really helped her a lot to, well, to gives, get through. And it gives me something to look forward to. Yes. You know, a, a, in a marathon cycle, it's, it's, it's many months. Yeah. And if, if the only thing you have to say, okay, the end is the literal finish line of the race, sometimes that can seem too daunting. But I'm like, ooh, recovery, hard recovery week's coming up here in two yeah. weeks. I can make it to two weeks. I can push myself and I can keep this going because yeah. I know this recovery week is good. I just need I need those little uh, stops along the way before yeah, you get to, sure. the fir- to the finish line. The other thing that I think runners do that makes me crazy is when there's a hot race like this weekend and they you can't run as fast as you want to run. Um, and, and it's not always an indication of your fitness. I mean, you can get a PR, but you still could run faster. So, and, and I think most people know they could do better and they get frustrated. And then the next week they're like, Oh, I'm going to do it better. And I'm going to sign up for a race next weekend because I'm going to prove that I can do it. Don't do that. Let your body recover and be patient. And maybe in three or four weeks, pick a race and try it again. That's fine. But don't go out there the next weekend and say, I'm going to try this again because your legs will tell you otherwise. It will say, nope, you weren't on a cellular level. You were not healthy enough for this. You cannot beat science. Yes, you (laughs) cannot. Even if you feel like you can and you're and, you know, you just can't. So don't I mean, give yourself the recovery. Give yourself the time. Be patient. Let the whole process work and then it'll be there when you want it to be there. Well, we want to um, certainly congratulate everybody who crossed yeah, that finish great line. Job, the guys. Tens of thousands of people, in, and I know that there are races all around the country. So if you just happen to be watching watching this, I'm sure there was some race in other in other parts of the country. But we just know that this was a this was a big one here. You know, it was almost thirty thousand people, and yeah. um, it was beautiful to see. And if it was your first time or your fiftieth time, you're crossing a finish line. Congratulations! And if you haven't ever done Gasparilla before. Mm-hmm. You should do Gasparilla. It's just a fun race. It's a great environment. It's so many people. It's our biggest race. Yes. And people come from all over the country to do this race. And like, I know we said all 50 states, and there I think there was like 16 countries in yeah. 50, all 50 states. Because because they're coming to our town. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. I think one of my Memphis runners texted me right after, and she said, hey, I really want to come to Gasparilla next year. It looks so fun. I'm like, come on down. Yes. It's fun. I, um, you know, I, while I was cheering on the for the 15 and 5K, uh, a lady came up to me and she was like, "Hey, can I get a picture with you?" And I'm, you know, yes. And then she said, "I'm Terry. I'm a meteorologist 
in Wood TV, which is in Grand Rapids. Oh, that's Grand, so no, cool. Gra um, Grand Rapids, Michigan, right? That's Grand Rapids. Yes. And so, um, so yeah, she's like, I'm running with my friend, and she told me that you are the meteorologist here. So she's so we snapped. And I was like, way to go, meteorologist. Running and how these. did she do? Did she? Did the, how did the weather feel to her? Because I always wonder these well, people she, that come from up north and they they really it's I, cold up there. I, I didn't get a chance because literally she was running past me. Oh the, yeah. So, so I, but I, called, hey, I want to talk to you about the dew point later. <laughs> but she yes. Because let's talk about the dew point. Let's geek out. Um, so but but the uh, she she was here for what her friend lives here and was running all the races and she was running the 5k with her so um so shout out to terry for coming down and leaving michigan and being down yeah. here in the in the in the for those of you that don't know i met lee over dew point like yeah. we are both such dorkus <laughs> dorkuses with, with yeah dew point i love i love it yes the because uh, <laughs> you know that's just not something that someone talks about much and i was at yeah. an event and i think it was luke yeah, my, my husband, husband was like, my wife loves the dew point. Come talk to my wife. Well, she because talk my about husband has this weird thing with meteorologists. He really loves meteorologists. <laughs> I don't know what, if he could meet Dylan Dreyer, it would be his life. Well, because she was working in Boston when you guys <laughs> yes, lived yes, in that area. Yes. So you've got, you've known her for longer but, than yeah. most of us. Yeah. So when we went to that event, he's like, please, please, Pam, she's the meteorologist. I'm like, what is with you and meteorologists? <laughs> he's like, my, my wife loves the They're dew point. so smart. <laughs> Oh, but he totally used me yeah, to know. meet you. <laughs> and now look at us, however many years later. Um, so congratulations to everybody. Yeah, uh, we'll congratulations. We'll continue to, um, obviously, keep up with Strafa um, workouts. We're, we'll, get, we'll get updates from, from Nick, again, because his, of his sleep schedule. I don't want to keep bringing him in because this is really, like, messing with his, his sleep yeah. schedule. But um, I told him, you know, he can get some, some little videos that he can shoot. For sure. We, we'll, we'll do some check-ins like that. And tell us what you guys want yeah. on Strava. Like, I can, I can do so many different things. So um, let's, you know, send us some notes. And any any and any questions you have, we'll, we'll create a whole show. Mm -hmm. Actually, this is a, the reason that we're talking about recovery, not only because of the race, is because um, where my husband works, someone who knows that he's kind of a runner was like, hey, can you give me some tips on recovery? And he said, well, why don't you listen to my wife's podcast? And then, oh, yeah. <laughs> and so I said, well, you know what? For him, we will do an entire show on recovery. Yeah. And it makes sense because we all need to recover this week. And I got one yesterday yeah. about FOMO, somebody that is has been sick and hasn't been able to run. And, and so we'll do a whole podcast on that because that is a thing. Like FOMO when you can't run and you're watching everybody run, that's really tough. So we will do a whole podcast on that. All right. Well, everyone, have a wonderful Tuesday. We will see you back here next week. Uh, thanks, Coach, and congratulations on all your races well, thanks. as well. Congratulations to you, too. Thanks. I was so psyched about those splits. <laughs> uh, yes, I, I, I did get the negative splits, and I did say when it hurt in my brain, I, I literally told the co my coach, it's okay if it hurts. So I, so don't slow down now. The, if you ask for it, you best not well, slow down. Well, and now down. it's on Strava, so you better, you know, you got to. <laughs> You got to show people that you yeah. can do it, right? <laughs> and, I, and I hopefully did. So uh, we'll see you guys next week. All right. Bye-bye. Let's go, let's go.